back to Cool Conversations back in the Barn Theatre. Feels like we're back at home uh, after a couple of weeks on location uh, in the French Alps. Sorry if you did listen to any of those uh, episodes. We had some tech issues. I was let loose on my own. Never a good thing with tech. Now, this week's guest is somebody that means an awful lot to me. Uh, he, become, he has become my main running buddy over the last year or so and has inspired me to, to get out and get it done regardless on how I'm feeling or what the weather is. This is a guy who I first met uh, probably about 18 months ago, two years ago, when he was working as a baker. And he walked past the window of a local cafe, came in, introduced himself, and his immediate generosity just came through in waves. Uh, my children were there and he said, hey guys, if you ever want to have a look around the bakery and see how we make the bread, just let me know and I'll arrange everything. That sums Guy up uh, really, really well. A man with a huge heart, a man with an, a massive amount of drive, uh, a, a man with integrity and um, generosity at the very heart of every single thing he does. Beyond that, he's a champion for the charity Petals. He would explain all about that um, during the conversation. And his running uh, has, has, well, it, it, it begs belief, to be honest. Uh, he ran uh, over 10K a day every single day in July, finishing off with a 60-kilometer run in one of the hottest days of the year. Every single day he ran with a smile. Back in January, he did the same thing. People were saying, you can't do it, you're going to buggy your knees, you're going to pick up injuries. And his attitude was, well, hey, let's just go out and see what we can do. This is my challenge, I do it on my own terms. And he smashed it. To say that I'm excited and humbled to have him here is an understatement. And we're going to jump straight in before I get too emotional because it has become one of my closest friends. Guy, welcome to Cool Conversations. It's a pleasure wow. having you here. Thank you very much for having me. It's uh, yeah, quite the introduction and coming on after you know, so many of your amazing guests and guests who I've taken and listened to their advice uh, for me to be sitting here um, and chatting with you, a, a great friend, someone who's become such a, more than a friend, you know, over the past... Yeah, 12, 18 months. Yes, thanks for having me. It's uh, no, it, awesome. <laughs> it, it's a total pleasure. So just in the build-up to this, uh, I mentioned to you, uh, how long have you been running for? As you said, February 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, then I, I thought you'd been running for years. No, so I, 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 did a, I did a foul run, like, years and years ago when I was up in the Lake District, without the bound, and it was just, like, a, one of the activities we did. I was a bigger lad, uh, wasn't really big on running, but I enjoyed it. And then I, I did a few races, all kind of runs, you know, 20, around 2012, 2013, and then kind of fell out of love with running. But I, yeah, I'd say I, I started running uh, Jan, February 2019, um, more for uh, my mental health. Um, I wanted to get outside a bit more, I was conscious of getting active and the links and the benefits with my mental health. I was addressing a few issues at that time. Um, but then it was May, yeah, May when I did a, uh, I went on a weekend running trip with Running Adventures. And um, yeah, that's what got me, uh, got me kind of excited for it, running on Exmoor. Because you have really thrown yourself into it. You, you do live, breathe running. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I've, um, yeah, I love it. It's, I've kind of, you know, found something I want to focus on and then with any, th most things I get into, you know, I really want to get involved. You know, I want to learn more about it. So I've been like, you know, like talking to other, you know, ultra athletes, you know, with, uh, with the amazing thing that is and can be seen in negative uh, Instagram. You know, you can, you can contact some of these guys or you can, you know, some of these guys and girls and, um, yeah, kind of learn or get tips from them or watching the documentaries, um, just talking to people. You know, I'm not really afraid of just kind of going, right, if I want to learn, I want to learn from this person or I like what they're doing, I want a bit of that. So, um, yeah, there's been a few instances of uh, sliding into DMs. I think that's a, the technical <laughs> term. Um, definitely, you know, contact people and saying, hey, I love what you're doing. Um, even like wanting to crew, you know, I think that's quite a cool thing. Like saying like, hey, we've been in the UK or whatever or whatever he's doing. 
I just want to be a part of it. I want to, I'm just focusing on, on the running for sure. And, and you, when you say you want to be part of it, is that, do, do you feel you found a community around it, a sense of belonging with yeah. your running? Yeah, I suppose that's quite, yeah, that's a good, yeah, definitely. I found, you know, we've, we're going to stuff, you know, in a bit more detail in a bit, but definitely I've I found um, some really good friends. I you know, become close friends and, you know, running, running groups or, you know, it's funny how you're talking to these people online and then you meet them at a run and, and you think you already know them, but actually you, you've never met them uh, before. Yeah, I, I know that feeling pretty well. And yeah, like, you know, I remember, you know, messaging you on Instagram and, you know, and when, 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 we, when I did catch you, I was like, oh, hey, yeah, we've got to catch up, we've got to go for a run. And I just think you can learn so much and learn from great people. And I know we've had this discussion before, you know, over a coffee kind of, you know, it doesn't necessarily maybe have to be like the best person, but someone who's doing it, someone who's involved in it. I personally think it's better to learn from someone who, who's, who's doing it than maybe someone who, maybe it's controversial, studied it or got the background in it, but not the, you know, the boots on the ground type mm -hmm. thing. Someone who's done it like yourself, you know, Everest, you've been there, you know the top, you know the route, rather than say someone who was a specialist or studied it and never actually been to base camp or knows what it's like to feel at camp three. Yeah, yeah. On, on your knees. Yeah. Feeling, feeling, feeling yeah. down and out. So, and, and so your, your running started, you, you, you mentioned running adventures, which is a, a friend of yours, is it Matt? Yeah, so again, that was just through, um, I saw that uh, Matt supported by Salomon um, and they were doing like a demo shoe day in Bristol. Um, I wanted to get involved and I liked, I looked on Matt's website, I was like, he seems cool. Um, like his branding, um, Ellis Brigham was supporting it. So I went there, got talking to Matt. He gave me like his details at the end. And then from that, I was like, oh, you do courses. Not like courses, but weekend away. I want to yep. learn more. Um, Kaylee, my partner, got me um, that for my birthday. So like for my 31st birthday, when I went on a running weekend, like, I never thought I'd be yeah. doing that. I <laughs> never thought I'd be spending like my birthday weekend like running around Exmoor. Um, but it was amazing. And then Matt's become one of those people who has been a great, uh, a great friend uh, and, and someone who's helped me along my own journey. Like it's, you know, his um, support and his coaching skills and, and just being, and having a beer before a run. Maybe it's better to have it after a run. But but, I was um, going to say, you sounded a little bit like Sean Conway, who we had on the show a little while ago, the guy that ran... Exactly, yeah, well, uh, Sean's... ...Land's End, John O'Groats, numerous times and numerous other things. Sean's yeah, amazing. He's, he's a big believer in the historical powers of beer. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite there with the lasagna and the uh, pizza at the moment, but I will be when I get some of my bigger plans underway. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think his double dipping in pub dinners is to try to replenish <laughs> some of the uh, extreme... Um, amount of calories that he burns through. But you, you do have similarities with Sean in so much that you both are quite ginger. And during lockdown, as lockdown began to ease and we began to start running again, mm. you, um, you definitely had the, the Sean Conway look. You had the big beard going on yeah. and, and you had a you know, big, big head of hair going on, um, uh, which is a, a particular trait of, of Sean Conway. So uh, it, was, it seemed strange that you know, two, two of my good friends had the... Channeling the uh, yeah, yeah ch channeling the, engine, the inner ginger, so to speak. Yeah, I'd say it's more Auburn, but you know, well, okay, we, sunset, we, we, but, we, yeah, we, we can rock and sunset. <laughs> yeah, we, we can debate that till to the house. Uh, but the house. no, for sure, like Sean, yeah, for me, I, I love his adventure side of it. Um, you know, we've spoken before, and like him being on here and now me on this conversation with me is like amazing. And I just love the way you know Sean's attitude is very much what I like seeing in you know some of these longer challenges. What I want to do is that kind of you know, yes, you've got a plan for sure. Like, you know, and Sean said it so well when, when he was on here, you know, there is a lot of planning what goes on, but then there is that element of you've just got to make the start. Yeah, you just got to go with and it And that's well. something I, you know, I do uh, with my running is that I just, you know, you've got to, like you say, like, get it done. You've got to, you know, get out the door. You've got to just make, but, make the start. You won't regret making the start. Time's going to pass. Because you are really proactive. I mean, before... Uh, before the whole COVID thing, we, we were running quite a lot together. And the weather, more often than not, was atrocious. Yeah. I remember a run that we did together, um, where we now call it the um, Bybury Reverse. Oh, the Colm Reverse. So Colm Reverse. Reverse. And, and we were almost up to our knees in water at some stage. Yeah. And you found the whole thing utterly hilarious. Yeah. And you just it's loved it. Me laugh. I, 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 I was getting a little <laughs> bit 
a little bit, oh, I'm over yeah, this, this were, is rubbish, yeah, yeah. it's muddy, I'm slipping over. Everything you seem to do has a humongous element of joy and fun to it. Where, where do you think that comes from? Uh, which I wouldn't say it's always, always been like that. I've always had my moments where you know, it's been tough, like a lot of people. Um, but it's just that you can't, you can't change those factors. You, you know, it's go, if it's wet, it's going to be wet. You can put in, you can, you know, put in factors like put a jacket on, whatever. It, you can't change the weather, and it's um, it's a it's a privilege to be out running the trail. I always think of it when I'm out running running the trails. It's an absolute privilege, you know, to be able to be out there. Yes, there are moments where it's really hard, and you know, you're struggling because it's like a long climb, or your knees are into hurt. But it's I see it as such a privilege to be able to go out run trails, walk, run a bit more. To be able to do that, I think it's such a special thing. Um, and you don't know what's always around the corner. Um, and I just think, for me, it's, you've, you've got to enjoy doing it as well. You've always said, you know, if, if, if it's not fun, like, why... Don't you know, why do it. Yeah, yeah why do it? And, yeah, there are moments when I am a bit kind of like, up against it on, 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 on a run, but... You've just got to laugh sometimes. Sometimes you go, like, what are you doing? Like, what am I? I've chose to do this. Like, I actively went out of my way to run, you know, the 63K or the Witchwood Way. And it was like the start of this really hot weather. Oh, it, 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 it was, was oppressively hot when it you was, ran that. But we couldn't change it. OK, we could have deferred it and gone the next day. But chances are it's still going to be hot. And I wanted it to be on that 31st day. Um, and we just put in extra things. So, like... A few more stops, more water. Looked at the, you know, nutrition stuff. Made an every time we went past, you know, a, a pub and we could go in there. We'd go in there and have, you know, like a cold, cold coke, not necessarily a pint. Sean, next time. Um, but yeah, you put these things in place so you still enjoy it because you've got to enjoy it. I, I'd rather get across. I'm not about racing or times as much, but I'd rather finish with a smile. And it's the it's the doing it. It's that um, intrinsic. I think it's the right term for it. Like that intrinsic motivation for me with running. It's it's the journey of it. It's the enjoyment I get from running and finishing the end. When I do runs, when they're you know called races, they're great. And for some people, that's what they love doing, and I totally get that. Um, but I'm not really bothered about the medal at the end or the finishers T-shirt. For me, it's, it's it's completing it. I call it a run with a number because I just see it as it's another run and it's a bit more organised. Um, you know, are you trying to say that our runs aren't organised, guy? No, well, there's an element of uh, moving on. Uh, no, they're not organised, are they? No, they're not organised. <laughs> um, it's just that, you know, I've, you've chose to do it. I've put myself in a position to run. Um, and it's that challenge. It's that self-belief. It's, it's, it, for me, it's, it, it means so much, and it's meant so much with what's happened over the last, you know. Um, so so uh, we, we might as well dive in at some stage. And you know, I know this is going to be relatively hard, potentially. Um, you know, we, we've alluded to it, you, by both you and your, and your partner, uh, Katie, you've, you've experienced some pretty profound uh, loss over the last, well, about 13 months now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jasper turned one last month. I mean, yeah, and, 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 and you, yeah. do, you do a lot of fundraising for petals. You've got, you got the T-shirt on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, as a... a Assuming that you're comfortable... Yeah, yeah, for sure. If, if, I, I think, you know... Just fill us in, because I know that this is intrinsically linked to some of the things that you do mm. uh, in terms of, you know, getting out there and, get, you know, getting yourself into, into the big outdoors. You, you mentioned the space being good for you know, mental well-being. So p perhaps you can just fill us in. Yes. With, uh, so, um, yeah, so I, uh, Katie, my partner, um, came pregnant. Uh, we then found out pretty early on uh, it's twi uh, twins, identical twins, boys. And then if we kind of jump a bit forward uh, on... Uh, uh, Kelly was experiencing some pains. Um, we went up to the uh, JR, John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. Um, yeah, I remember, it clear day, kind of went in. Um, we'd been going to the Oxford Hospital quite a lot because of being twins and having scans. Um, but it's when we got there, um, the doctor started doing the scans and trying to get the uh, fine heartbeats and found out that we actually, um, one of our boys had 
had sadly passed. Um, yeah, like that moment, I think something, a, a, a switch was flipped forever. Um, I suddenly had the realisation of the, the journey into parenthood and becoming a dad is going to be a different one. So we'd found out Barney had sadly um, would be born sleeping. The next question was, what's happening with our other boy, uh, Jasper? Uh, so Jasper's um, heart rate was going. He um, was pretty poorly. Yeah. Um, and there was questions whether to deliver or hang on. We wanted him um, to be delivered. So Katie went into emergency surgery. Um, and then at 19 minutes past nine, um, Jasper uh, was delivered um, at three pounds three. Wow. In um, like a little, I was saying to a friend earlier on actually, it was almost like he was delivered in like a little um, Ziploc bag and he was so small in this little table like, uh, um, and he brought him out to me before we took him to intensive care and um, yeah, and then at 20 past nine, um, Barney was delivered. So yeah, li life, life changed forever. Um, it was that stark reality of um, life and death. It was heartbreak. It was raw. It was painful. It was unfair. It's something you're never prepared for. You don't, you know, I, I, you, you, at no point during the pregnancy does anyone ever say, everything's 100%, mm. you're fine. You know, no one ever says that. I get that. I learned that very early on because this was, for me, my biggest fear happening. Oh. It really was. I said I'd be a lot more happier or more relaxed when um, the boys have been delivered. Da, 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 da. As time went on, I learned that they keep saying at this stage, I think, as it should be. Um, so when when we when we found out what what happened, it was it it was my worst nightmare having to call my parents, tell them over the phone. Well, Kaylee was, you know distressed it was it was tough but there are moments where you have to it's bigger than you it's it, I didn't have a choice I had to had to step up it's not about me I want my my mindset my well my my original thought in my head when this was happening was you know how's Kaylee because <laughs> I couldn't say she was in theatre what's going on with with, with Jasper um what do you do you know I was it was, I've used the term bittersweet quite a lot. Hmm. You, you've heard me say it loads. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it really was bittersweet. It, really, it is bittersweet because hmm. you, you know, when, when Jasper was in intensive care, um, it was hard because he's so small and they're doing, you know, putting all the lines into him and stuff and having his oxygen and, you know, that side of it's like, wow, you can see that change. And, you know, when he's settling and having to change a nappy in one of those incubators. Yeah. Now, that, that's like bomb disposal. You know, <laughs> your hands go in and you've got to kind of, that's tough. You know, trying not to keep it all clean. Um, and then there's that brutal punch in the stomach of, I've got to, I've got to arrange my son's funeral. I've got a son in intensive care. And I've lost his twin brother. And now we've got to carry on. And you do have to carry on. You've got to. You, you can't prepare for it. No one ever, you know, like with the things have to happen. You have to, uh, it's hard to say it now. I've got, you just process it and manage it and different elements when different things come up. And I think that's why when, you know, when I'm on the trails now, it's that enjoyment. It's that I've never felt pain as so emotionally and physical that when the doctor turned around, when he was, when the doctor turned around, sorry, when, when, um, when he was checking for the heartbeats, and he turned around and said, I'm so very sorry. I, I, I knew, you know, as he was saying that, as he turned, I knew something wasn't right. Hmm. 
And then, uh, 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 at what stage? Because you, know, you, you got the petals T-shirt on there. Um, I, I know for a fact that you've raised um, not an inconsiderable amount of money for them. At what stage? Did petals get involved? Was it, 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 so just explain what. Yeah, so are. so once you know everything's on the way. So during the time, um, you know, Jasper was in in intensive care. Then he went down to high dependency, low dependency, and then he was on the homeward bound mm. stretch. So we took in all the all the facilities. So uh, how long was he was he in for? Well, we, we should add. I mean, he, he's he's a healthy. Young yeah, yeah. Boy sorry, now. yeah. We kind of like yeah. So um, all his scans, neurological scans. Um, he, he's an absolute fighter. Yeah. He, he really put up the fight. Um, yeah, just, just over a month. Wow. Yeah, just over a month, I'd say. And we, and we he, as he progressed, you know, we, 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 we left us when we, we, were, we lived close enough to be able to go in. Yeah, I was going to say, were you travelling back? Each day, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we live close enough. Um, and, and to be honest, fortunate enough to be able to do that. There's some families who have to you stay there. Yeah. Um, and then that means, obviously, families have to, they've got other kids, they can't, it's, 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 it can be a minefield, it's, it's tough. And, you know, when you're there, to, I would like to say, like, the, the staff at JR, you know, each department were phenomenal and, and, and incredible. And there's a, a charity there as well called SNAP. Um, and, and they do a lot of the care and stuff with, with the parents when they're in the intensive care environment. So, you know, like, just like a coffee round. You know, something like that. Being, you know, I'll never forget, we had a um, strawberries and cream. I never thought I'd have strawberries and cream in an intensive care. You know, they came around for us, and me and Kaylee are both eating it. You know, it was amazing. And then they came back and like, do you want some more? And we were very like, no, no, we're actually, yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, so it's little things like that, you know, someone bringing you a cup of tea. So they were another charity who, 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 who were great, and, 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 and they were there chatting to us and saying, you know, you know might be worth talking to different people. And, and for me, with my mental health, I want to talk about this. I, I, I think you make an uncomfortable conversation comfortable by talking about it. It's hard. It can be painful. I think, um, you know, uh, Pete, um, who you had on last... Uh, Peter, uh, Peter Reid. Peter Reid said yeah. that for sure. And, and you make these conversations more comfortable by talking about them. It's, mm. it's hard. It's not, it's not it being easy. It's not... I, I have days when I want to talk about it and I have some days when I'm a bit like, mm. you know, is that just my identity now? No. But equally, I want to make sure that every parent who has to go through the unimaginable has the support. So with Petals, they do um, specialist counselling. You know, it can be, you know, the, the couple, the parents, the mum, the dads, whatever your scenario, you know, you, you can go into a, into a safe environment and chat with a specialist counsellor. Um, you know, you can have, a, I can't remember, there's certain amount of sessions, you know, you can alternate between, like, one week partner would go, then you would go. Um, but I truly believe without, without Petals... Um, helping me put together the new foundations. I don't think I'd be in a, st a stronger position or feel more as I am now. Um, just because, you know, you, you've got to imagine every, everything changed at that point. When, like I said earlier, I, you know, everything changed. Um, you've learned a new normal. You have to learn a new normal. Um, and it's brutal and it's hard and it's unfair and you feel guilt because then you think, oh, am I moving on? Oh, I can't. Oh. But, you, you know, you, you carry on. You learn to manage it. Um, but, with, you know, with, with the help of Petals, they help you put in that foundation. You know, that, that, that first laying stone, you know, they, they help you put that in and then you can start rebuilding. You know, you wouldn't build a house on, you know, just sand or if you did, it would be fine for, I don't know, Let's just say, you know, if the foundation is down, you know, for six months, six so months, it's gonna you know, and collapse. suddenly it's going to all go and it's going to hit you when you're least expecting it and you're going to be in a, in a tough place. You know, I think the work Petals do um, and all, all, you know, the, the smaller bereavement charities that you don't hear of them until you need them. Mm. I never even thought of Petals, if I'm honest, in, until I needed them. Right. Like, you wouldn't. You don't go, right, I'm going to plan okay. just in case. Like, you know, you, you, you don't do that. I never had been in a funeral director's mm. office before because you don't go, oh, actually, as the weather's nice, as we're all feeling jolly, um, tell you what, we'll go down to funeral directors so when the time happens, you've got a bit of an idea. You wouldn't do that. Oh, you so, yeah. you know, you're having to, you know, learn. You're having to be, and you can only do it by doing it. And I wanted to make sure I was involved in that element. Mm. I wanted to make sure I didn't want to, do, you know, I've got the most supportive and loving um, family, um, both sides of 
my parents, Kaylee's parents, her family, my family, like, we're, we're super lucky. Um, but there's some things you have to do yourself, and you have to, um, you know, I, I do think I, I've, I've had to do more. I've had to back myself. I've had to believe in myself more, because no one else is going to believe in me. They're going to support you through your way, but no one else can give you that, you've got this. It's not arrogant. So I never want to come across with my running like, oh, you just got to do it, just give it a go. You know, it's not that I haven't put the groundwork in, but I do believe you've just got to make that start. You've got to get out the front door on anything. It can be running, it can be looking at other projects. And the way I like do stuff on my Instagram or put posts up, it's I want I, I'm all about the honest talk. And with things like, you know, with your men, you've got to be honest and Sometimes that isn't for people to talk about. They like doing it in a different way. But for me, if I can, you know, if it can help or just promote one little thing, start a conversation. That's all I, I, I like to think about is like if you can start a conversation. You know, if you haven't thought about these smaller bereavement charities before, maybe, you know, look on their website or, or, or you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you, it's interesting, it's raw, it can be uncomfortable when you, when, you, when you talk about it and then people reach out. Well, you, I, th I think it's a case of, of, of you give it a voice. Yeah. Rather than just closet it away and hope it never rears its head. Mm. And certainly on, the, you mentioned earlier about Instagram and social media being a, a, a sort of two-headed monster in a way. It can <laughs> yeah. be, you know, we all know. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you. I think there's... Evil yeah. and, and, and certainly, not simply on social media, but you know, as I said right at the start, I, I think you are one of the more honest, open people I've ever met. And you're dealing with this immense you know, emotional wrench. And, and you are totally transparent on some of your posts and, and what you say. And, you know, because, I mean, let's be honest, you know, you, you come out of the house quite a lot, you know, my children adore you. And, you know, and you're very open and honest with them. And I think that's one of the things that makes you such... Uh, a, you know, a strong individual is that you do have the confidence and the bravery to give something a voice um, and, and, not, and not be sh overly shy about it, which is a, yeah. an immensely powerful, profound uh, It hasn't, trait. you know, certainly hasn't always been that way. Um, but I do, I do feel, you know, from when things changed, when... when 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 uh, when we were in the hospital and, thing, and things were said and things happened, there was. I'm not saying I suddenly became this. Well, I grew and I had to be the man. I had to be, but it was. There was this moment of. For me, like that moment, life couldn't get any worse. Mm -hmm. Nothing could get any worse. You know. It was almost like just just throw it at me. Looking back, obviously, yeah. at the time it was like it was still like this is the word, how how or oh, you know, but for for me, I think that's why I've got into more the ultra endurance stuff, and I want to and I want to do more bigger things. I want to do more challenges. I love the idea, you know, with some of Sean stuff, you know, how he does things. Uh, it's the adventure. It's the raising the profile, and it's just backing yourself. Like I've been at my lowest mm. you know I thought when I had a problem with, with my mental health before this happened I thought I was low then and I was I was low I was seeing a specialist counsellor and I was I always refer to it as I've always put a plaster over my mental health and then that was a time to rip that plaster off and actually let it heal and address it so, so, so the, 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 the the mental ill health before mm. but it sounds like you were just patching that up, you're rendering over that, yeah. and then it all just yeah, came it came head. like came to like, came like to a head, it came um, out. and I wanted to get that in line because the reality was I was going to be coming a dad yeah. in how many other months. Well, well as you so, said, you, know, you were you were pulling the foundations. You, you were visionary enough to to realise that you needed to put the foundations in place. Yeah. And again, I think it's the honesty. You know, it's that brutal honesty with yourself. It's like I said, it's it's just. I've, you know, I've been at the lowest. I've experienced that. I just, yeah, I, I nothing. I, I'm not chasing after the pain to try and. Oh, I want to find. It's not about that. It's just that. Well, 
if you back yourself and believe in yourself and commit to it as well, I think that's something I've learned from, from some of my counselling I've had is, you know, if you want to start making that change, you've got to be on board. Mm. You know, you really have to, you know, whether that's, you know, with counselling, a diet, wanting to, you know, um, get into cooking, learning a new instrument, you've got to commit to it, haven't you? You know, you've got and, to... And how do, you, how do you go about doing that? Because this is going to sound a little bit ridiculous, but I, I do struggle a little bit committing to my running and I lean on you for that because you know the, the message would come through and you say hey fancy a run tomorrow you know, yeah. meet, meet you at so and so at seven o'clock and that's my commitment I, you know, I make a commitment to you I mean how have you dealt with that um for, for me I've I like I kind of talk about this phrase and you know I say quite a bit it's like it's time in the shoe I really do I think it's it's running for me. It's one of those sports. Well, where well, it's, it's more. So, sorry, sorry. It's more, more about you. You, you mentioned you're making a commitment. Yeah. Um, but it's all in general. You know, I, I, I mean, how, how do you? The, the counselling you learn from the counselling that it's it's making a commitment. Mm. Is, is how, how you found uh, enlightenment for for one of a, a better phrase. But I'm was curious where that commitment... Did you just make a commitment to yourself? Or what, was it by association somehow? I, yeah, it was myself. It was that realisation of I need to commit to this. I want to... Wow. I have to. Yeah. I ha it's, it, 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 mental health doesn't care... And we all know it doesn't care what you do for a living, what your background, what you do in your spare time. It will just strike and it will be coming hard and fast or it will bubble away. But at some point it's going to come to a yeah. head. I had that moment and I was like, enough's enough. I'm not in the right place. I need, I need help. Mm. I want to put my hand up now. Um, and then when, you know, I... Then found out, you know, in you know a few minutes' time, later further on down, you know, you know, going to become a dad. It was that I need to manage, and and I need to learn these coping strategies and what works for me or what doesn't work for me. Or, you know, you could spend all day looking on, you know, the the, the internet or read a book, and what works for someone similar to you might not work it won't work for you you know I've tried different things that didn't work that worked f f for me running really does help out but it helps out it's not a therapy it's not just the running what's got me through this you'd be naive to think that it's a massive element but it was it was addressing and getting starting that conversation I mean starting that conversation of going I don't feel great or hey I'm not sure on something um, which it's, it was almost a relief, though. Mm, it was yeah. that moment of going like... Oh, and looking back, going, oh, it wasn't that bad. But it's at the moment when you're, when you're all absorbed in it and you, and, and, you, and, you, and you do feel like there's nowhere to turn, actually, you know, talking to somebody is the most scariest thing. I remember thinking, oh, my God, I'm talking to... A, I've got to go and talk to a straight... And it was, like, the biggest thing. And I was, in my head, it was just like, oh, you've got to drive... You've got to go into Siren. I'll know when you get to Siren, there'll be no parking. What, there's no park. Oh. And there was all those excuses almost coming out, like, why not to go? Yeah, you find all the reasons why yeah, not yeah. to go. Yeah, was, yeah. It was very much that. Yeah. But it, and then it was that moment of, like, no, you've, you've got to go. Like, just get in that room. And it's those steps, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's putting in those steps. And, 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 that, and that's definitely... I mean, to bring it back a little bit to the running, I mean, that's definitely reflected in your running as well. I mean, that, mm. that's such a, a mindset of yourself. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's unreal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, it's... Yeah, you, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I didn't realise that your mental health had come to sort of that point all at the same time. Yeah, uh, so, it, 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 yeah, it was just... I've, 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 I've not always spoken out about it, but it was, yeah, it was... A few months before, um, I, I was like, right, I need to... And um, got some amazing support through, through the NHS. You know, I think a lot of people have good and bad experience with the NHS, but, you know, I got myself on that list and eventually um, got the support, started it. And almost uh, the counsellor I saw, uh, a fantastic lady, I can't remember her name, she's incredible... She kind of we spoke about things, and it was almost like I'd, I'd passed my worst by this time. Um, 
but it's how we could then put in preventative measures. Yeah. You know, rather than going like, right, we need to start accounting from start. Actually, like we, we start from this point, and we're 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 equipped you with your toolkit. And I've always laughed when people go, oh, you need to put it in your toolkit. I've always like whatever. Tell you what, I'm glad I had that toolkit this last 12, 13 months. Um, and that it was it was that start to you know it was a lot going on as well, and you know trying to process things. And you know I wasn't being the best person, you know, when I was when I was you know struggling with things, um, but again, the way I see things is now is like you, you, that's happened. It's moving forward now. I've I've got way more responsibility. It's not about me now. It's about well, as Jasper theory. and Kate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's that now. It's bigger than it. So, and, uh, and I just want you know when when we do speak to Jasper about everything and his brother and what happened, I just want to make sure that I can say to Jasper, you know, and look him in the eye and just kind of be like, you know, I, I found it hard. It was hard, but knuckle down and I, I, I managed it. I didn't, I didn't just throw the towel in. I could have just gone, I can't do it, I can't do it. But that, that wasn't an option, actually. Like, there was no option to do that. But you it, have to kind of keep, keep going and almost push yourself. Is, that, is it an element of getting comfortable when you're uncomfortable? Maybe it's that mindset. It's, it's all those... Sometimes looked at it as buzzwords, maybe all kind of fancy. You know, this is the you know new trendy word to say, but mm. a lot of it is mindset. Mm. I've spoken to people who have you know had horrific injuries or um, things have happened in their life, huge traumas in different ways, and some people are saying like, I don't know how you've done it. Well, I, and then, and then, I'm, but then I'm, I've I'm, said I'm, to them, I'm one, I'm one of that crowd. I mean, I, I know you pretty well. Yeah. And, and your ability to navigate through the last 18 months, I think, has been nothing short of incredible. Uh, and, and you say, well, I had no choice. You know, we do always have yeah, a choice. Yeah, true. But I, I think it's a reflection on the person that you are. Uh, your, your ability to, to say, right, no, I, I will take this on. Yeah. And I will see it through. I, I think it's... Something that I, I know for a fact that Jasper will be incredibly proud, um, you know, without without a doubt. Uh, and, and and we see it in your running. Uh, I mean, who, who else would decide that in July to support Petals? Are you going to run? I suppose none of us knew it was going to be quite so hot, but we're going to run ten k, well, a minimum of ten k yeah. every day. Because you and I went as when I did my hamstring. You and I went out running together yeah. with Tom from Far. <laughs> And uh, yeah, cause, that was... cause, cause I, I can't remember whether you contacted me or I contacted you and said, hey, we're going to go out for a run. I said, oh, I'm going to run with Tom. Might be a bit further than 10K. We ended up doing about 16K or so. Yeah, it was... In... And it was at a fast pace. So Tom, I... Tom's a fast boy as well. Yeah, and I so, buggered uh... my hamstring. Yeah, you... and, and the next day I was just thinking, oh my God, this is so not what guy needs on day two or three of your challenge. Yeah, it was pretty soon on, wasn't it? Uh, but, but you just took it on and you went from strength to strength with an average of about 13k a day, wasn't it? Yeah, with, but with it, 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 it just came about though because Petals were doing, I saw online they were doing a, like a virt, like, you know, loads of virtual races and they were locked down, which has been great um, to keep people motivated and keep people ticking over whatever their reasons for it. And, and Petals basically said, that, you know, there's a virtual 10k uh, throughout, throughout uh, July. Was that, so um, was, that, was that one every day with petals? No, so it was so just like, just do a 10K. Type. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and I say just 10K, that's unfair. You know, like whether you're doing 1K or, or 10K or 100K, yeah. you're still getting out there, you're getting it done. Um, but it, I, I kind of wanted to put a bit of a twist in it. You know, I, sometimes you know, when we do our runs, they're usually over 10K anyway. When we well, well, yeah, but that, that, that's your motivation. When I go out on my own, <laughs> it's about six. No. But, you know, for me, it was like, well, I'm already running that distance. Um, I want to get involved with petals and want to help out. Um, maybe I could do, you know, 10K a day, like I did in January. Mm. Um, and then I was like, well, you want to round it up because then 200 miles sound, sounds Yeah, better. well, you said that in, in, in January as well. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do 10K a day, but then I need to do an extra, like, I don't know, 8 it, or 9K at yeah. the end. Yeah, and you add it on, you know, to, to, the, to the run, each run. So you, it's not, you don't notice it too much. But then it was that, right, I've done that. Oh, I want to put a twist in it. And I was just on... Um, I was just on OS Maps actually. I was just like, like just looking at maps, you know, looking at local trails. Like, oh, I haven't run that way before. And then um, I kind of saw like Witchwood Way, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Just popped it into Google. And as soon as it said it's circular, mm. I was like, 
bingo, yes, that'll right. take me back to the car then. You know, so, so, so what exactly is a Witchwood Way? I mean, I know, I know it's a relatively low call. So, I mean, there's, there's, yeah. We're really lucky here in the Cotswolds. Yeah, there's loads super. of like, long distance paths, but the Witchwood yeah. Way's Witchwood Way is relatively unusual because it is a circular. Yeah, so it basically goes path. around the outside of the old Witchwood Forest, I believe. Uh, so there are moments where it kind of goes out and then goes back and you could just go straight down, but mm. it follows the tree yeah. line. So I believe that. that, that's, that, that that's what it is. And it started in Woodstock stock by Blenheim Palace um, and you go out that way around the villages and back through so it, it, it was great um, but it was that it was that going that extra challenge I wanted to just push it a bit more mm. um, I wanted to start that again it's that conversation and, and, and in the Petals group you know it was great everyone like putting up their daily posts or you know it, it started the conversation it started off as the run mm -hmm. by the end of it it's, it's super cheesy cliche it wasn't about the running it was that I spoke to so many more parents who have been through the unimaginable. I spoke to some more dads, you know, some dads have opened up. Um, one, of the, one of the other dads in the group who won't mind me saying, he then did the 10K a day. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, wow. He, he did 10K. And, um, you got his, competition. His, his graph was really neat for it. It was like 10K a day. And then towards the end, he's like, actually, I want to round it up. So, yeah, so he did the extra mileage on the last day. Um, it was, you know, hearing people go, oh, yeah, I'll tell you what, guy, I'm going to do... I'm going to do 20k. That's going to be my my. I was only going to do 10, um, but I want to push it to 20. Or I'm going to do 15. Or I'm going to do 10k mm -hmm. once a week. It was everyone's their own personal challenge, but everyone had this story, um, you know, this link of uh, uh, of of what's happened. But it was just yeah, I was helping to raise that profile. Like I've said before, you know, you don't think of some of these charities, and it's hard for these smaller charities. They're not getting the grant, especially fundraising this year. It must be oh, awful, yeah, you know, yeah. like the big it's events or even small events are being cancelled. Um, it's now just then wanting to... I just want to take it up a pace. I just want to do something... Like I said, I, just, I love, like, Sean's ideas of stuff. Yeah. You know, I don't think... Yeah, it's a bit off the wall, Sean. I don't think, I, you know, like, his F principles, you know, the furthest, fastest... But like, I don't know about that. I'm not really big on the time or the Strava data. Um, but just setting out on an event, like, a, lo a, long, a long different distance path, or just seeing how far I can go in, like, 12 hours. How yeah. far can I go in 24 you know, um, now, now, you, you are rather famed in our household for being a tech guru. <laughs> uh, you, you do, you do like your tech, and you, like, you're yeah. very good at diving in and researching. So, whenever we need advice <laughs> in the cool household, it's like, okay, let's let's like ship this over to Guy, and in 24 hours we have all the all the results. Sometimes. Um, and so, so, so you you said that you're not big into Strava. But yeah, you know, I do know that you clock times yeah. and things like that. I mean, do, do you use that data in a positive way, or, or is it a? Because I know some people do. Yeah, yeah. I, some I, people don't. I, I personally don't use that much data and stats, yeah. um, but I get for some people that's their that's their motivation. Sometimes they need to see a. a um, that's how they work with their training program. I'm a bit more fluid. Like I just want to go out and run, and then I'll come back. Oh, that, I use OS maps. Well, um, I noticed so, uh, that, 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 that we, we've got to do it. The get oh, outside, yeah. absolutely. Um, audience survey mug that we all have. I, have, I do have to point out, I did get a blue one because uh, we're, we're both yeah. uh, OS champions. Um, That's actually a watermelon, that colourway. Uh, watermelon. Yeah. I would say it's pink. Uh, for those listening on the <laughs> podcast, there is a shocking pink uh, thermal cup that guys brought into the uh, into the studio today. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know because we've been running together. Yeah, and, and you have it all the data sort of downloaded. Yeah, so I have it. I have it on my phone. Um, I, I purely use it for just the map features, just to record the run. Because then I like looking back and oh, actually, you know, oh, we could have gone around that way, or next time we can add on a loop, or we could. That's well, we, we, I mean, we, we've we've done that a couple. Yeah, of times that's together. what I use it for. Um, apart from that, I don't have a, like a smart watch or, uh, or or heart rate monitors. Not, you know, totally like ah, get them away from me, but. I, for me, I think it will take away maybe what I like the just uh, well, the fun of it. The fun, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, exactly uh, uh, we've been at my house. I mean, we've, we've got the paper map out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 yeah well, that's it. Even we'll, going we'll from the go. phone, you know, when we're out on the run, like to, you know, looking at the map screen. But then before we've gone out on the run, actually, you know, get a coffee out. Don't see the coffee on the map. Yeah. Then it's trying to fold it back, and you know, it's all those 
to me, that makes part of the experience, you know, having the coffee at yours before or after, you know, when we finish a run, time for a coffee, great, yeah, um, talk, kit, I bore you with kit, or, or, uh, or put your, no, that way, or, you know. It's, but the, 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 the thing that does interest me, I mean, and you've got a pair on today, you do seem to be a, a, a bit of a Salomon boy. You, you, whenever we go running, you're always out in Salomons, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. For me, I find, I think their, their shoes um, are super comfy. They just work with my, my feet. Um, I do like them, um, yeah, and again, maybe through running adventures, because Matt, being supported by them, for, you, know, you can have demo shoes, it's not uh, so yeah. much at the moment, yeah. because of COVID restrictions, but, you know, it's such a, a great thing to be able to wear a pair of the shoes you want, in a size, for a 10k trail, and actually test them, guys in the gear shop, you know, have a tricky, sh tricky you know, sometimes, oh, it's, 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 it's hard, because boots, it must be, you know. It's exactly the same with my clients, they say, okay, what, what boots do I need for climbing Amadablam or Everest, and say, okay, you need a pair of Las Portiva Olympus Mons, or what, yeah. uh, I mean, it's so <laughs> difficult. And no one has the same, like, like, shoe, like, a size, so these, like, say, like, a 10 and a half, but then I've got other shoes which are more of 11, or some which are 10, you know, I, I just now, um, like, it's all about comfort, mm. you know, I don't mind, yeah, I, I like the colourways. I'm quite into that. I like some of the, like the uh, like some of the night trail stuff. I think they've got some really nice apparel colours and that stuff. But with the trainers, it's just about that extra comfort for me for getting that that mileage. Mm. Um, because I'm going through them a lot as well. With, oh, I'm sure, running, yeah. I, I am. I'm, I'm sure. You I am right. going you're, through you're, you're, shoes. You're nailing. Was it the average shoe you only get? Well, I say only. You get about 500k. Out yeah, there. there's lo there's there's loads of again. It's you know. You speak to different people, something like they've got to replace them after, their, like you said, X, or when they're worn out, they're worn out, or go before then. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be kind of not the, the, quite into barefoot running at the moment. I'm not, I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. Uh, it was, uh, well, the, 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 who's the guy? Because um, I, I was trying to get him on the show. There's, there's a guy that does always running in, in, in bare feet. It's incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Uh, I, yeah, it, it, I've seen quite a few people. Say so if you're like, on Instagram and stuff and people run in barefoot and it seems there, there seems lots of nice shoes you can get now, can't you, which like mimic not wearing. Yeah, the, 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 well, yeah. there's a number, there's, there's the, the five-toed ones. Oh, yeah, that, the they, vibrant. Um, vibrant. Uh, completely um, eludes me right now. Uh, but no, yeah, the barefoot running for me, de definitely not. I mean, I don't know whether Maybe, it's my, no. my um, the issues that I've got with my heels. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, I, I struggle enough in, in the trainers that I've got. And then it was, it was interesting that when we were running throughout the winter, mine, well, my, you know, mine literally fell to pieces at the end. <laughs> my toes were hanging out yeah. and all sorts. That was de definitely a time. Um, and, the, and the other thing which, which always really surprised me, you're, you're a brilliant connector. You're really, <laughs> really good at connecting people. Uh, and I think that comes, well, I, I don't know. I mean, is, is that something which you've always been good at? Yeah, I'd like, I don't know, like that kind of social butterfly type element of you know i like being around and, and meeting different people you know i'm not i'm not shy and if i want to talk to a particular person i, I will try and talk to that person or at least you know i, I yeah i i don't mind starting that conversation well, right yeah let's talk um i've just been lucky to meet such but, 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 varied people yeah, I was gonna say, because, amazing... because, because your network is super varied yeah it, it is it's someone like yeah, yeah. I'm lucky that I've got an amazing, you know, network of friends from such random different things and jobs or lifestyles or, I guess, I think, you know, when I was at school looking back, I, I always had a, um, a real mixed friendship circle. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, you know, like the sport lot, the, um, you know, but it was rugby the, the outdoor when was rugby when I was at school. Yeah, I kind of plodded my way around because yeah. so I was built for it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I've always loved meeting and hearing different people's opinions and ways of doing things. And just if something's really cool, I just want to—I just want to know more about it. I think that's what it is. And yeah, I think you can. There's no harm in starting. I said no harm in starting a conversation. It's better to have that conversation with the person and not have it, um, depending on the conversation. But it's that. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I, I like people talking to people. Yeah, oh yeah, I know so and so. You should that you two should you know talk or say. I just I just like helping out. It's, it's that, that's why I said that, you, you yeah, are brilliant. If I can help people to put something in motion or start something, I, I like that. Oh. If I could, you know, maybe 
don't bottle that or make my own. <laughs> well, I was going to say, <laughs> but, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's something which, um, yeah, you, you definitely need to investigate sort of career-wise because because it, because it is a bit of a gift. It's, it's not something which everybody is good at. No, because because when you used to work at Chase, you were kind of um, well, it explains the situation. You, you, you were part of the events team. Yeah, somehow. so I looked after all the, the tours and, you know, getting people to the distillery and then that worked on, you know, working with some of the brand partners and um, I just liked being involved in every element, which is, you know, good and bad because you can become very busy. Mm -hmm. um, but I always see it as it was so great. You know, there were times in the early days at Chase when, um, you know, we were doing an event with Sunseeker down in Pool and then that was the weekend and suddenly it's like back to the distillery on Monday for tours, whether it was like public or the bars or the, um, you know, brand partners, people coming out of London, you know, um, talking to the guys at Bremont, you know, I kind of, yeah, it's liked connecting the dots maybe, mm. um, which, which is great. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I, I, I would like, you know, I need to try and make it work a bit more at the moment. You know, we've, on top of everything else, you know, I took, uh, there was redundancy in January and then I was due to start a job before lockdown like so many other people would have mm. been and then that got yeah. channeled. So um, there's, there's definite plans and scope and, yeah, I'm backing myself. So <laughs> um, watch the space. I, I just want to, yeah. Get it done, and um, no, that, that's, that's my tagline. Yeah. You, 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 you can't steal my tagline. There. It's interesting that you mentioned uh, Braymont because we, we both actually got Braymonts on, yeah. uh, on on today. Because I, I know that you've been on um, on to their radar, so to speak. You go along to quite a lot of their. Yeah, so again, so super got to know. super lucky getting to know them. I've you know I wanted this watch. I wanted a Braymont for them. When I first saw them, and then I realised it wasn't my 30th until like three years later, and I wanted to tie in, and I really set my mind, and I want, you know, I set the goal. I wanted to get um, this watch, and then through that time, I think it was, you know, probably annoying them, uh, keep reaching out, but Rudy, the, the boutique manager in Mayfair, really kind of put up with me and took me under his wing. So whenever I'd go into London, I'd pop in and say hello, but always be greeted with, hi, guy, have a coffee. We'd always get watches out, knowing that it's still years in ahead. Yeah. But I just loved, yeah, the story, <laughs> the branding, just the, the quality of the watch. For me, that, that's my active watch. Mm. Um, yes, you, I know there's tons of benefits of having something, um, you know, electric and all, you know, kind of recording things. But for me... It never runs out of battery. No, it doesn't. Um, no, it's, just that, it's, it's just that British engineer. It, it, yeah, it's, it's more than a watch to me. Um, and I love what those guys do. Again, I wanted to know more, so I kind of really reached out. And then luckily enough, get invited to some of their events. Um, yeah, and, and they're super lovely. And they're down the road at Henley, effectively. Yeah, I was going to say... You know brothers it, extremely well, you know. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, used you, to be a brand ambassador yeah. for them. But actually, oh, embarrassing and Lee, you, you know more about the business <laughs> and the brand than I ever did. Uh, which, which I think goes back to your inquisitive mm. nature. And, and also, to a certain extent, your love, of, you know, your, your love of tech and your ability to connect and the fact that you will happily start the conversation. Uh, which I think is um, is a brilliant thing because I'm quite often I'm, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit the opposite. I'm actually <laughs> quite a shy individual. Um, one of the last people to go. Oh, actually. Um, so 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 what is on the radar? So you, you've just done your 31 days in July. Yeah. Um, you you said earlier that petals have raised over 30,000 uh, pounds on on that cause. Uh, I know for a fact that you're always somebody that's constantly scheming, uh, always ideas bubbling away. Yeah. Do, do you have a next challenge or are you still a little bit in uh, mental, and I mean it's not in, in the right way, in mental recovery yeah. from <laughs> your 31 days yeah. of July? No, no, definitely. Um, so I want to take it easier this month. Oh, no, um, I'm not surprised. Because... You know, I, I, I'm keen, as, as much as, you know, I've said I'm super keen, I want to do more and more and more. I don't want to, it's, it's a long term, you know, with the running. So I don't want to just suddenly crash out and then have to, you know, have loads of rehab or take a break from it. You know, so, yeah, a, a cruisy month. Um, I am going to, I'm running an ultra on Sunday, so that, that'll be fun. I love now. that. But a cruisy so, month. Oh, yeah. by the way, I'm but running an ultra. Yeah, so Where's that? Is that? That's with Running Adventures down in, okay. down in, down in Surrey. 
um, 30 miles, and then, yeah, just runs with yourself and around here, and then September, I want to look at it, I've kind of ish got a plan for September. Um, it, it's that, 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 that's so mean if you've got it nailed. I, no, I, I it's not nailed done, at all, honestly. It's not done all the planning. It's not, it's not nailed. No, there's not too much planning. It's more, I, I really like these, you know, like the Cotswold Way, these the long distance paths, um, and exploring them. So I want to kind of look at more, but not, not saying too long it's going to take me you know, multi days, or because in the day I've, I've still got to be a dad. Yeah. Like I'm still negotiating and, um, you know, parenthood and being a, a new dad. And, you know, I, I'm so lucky that Kaylee is so supportive with my mm. running and, and the later evenings of running or running every day, or, you know, so I want to make sure I'm doing something which could be done in the day, but still, you know, a, a challenge. Maybe not so, not that my ones have been ever high profile, but just like a 60K or something, kind of a bit more. So like, like I did on, you know, the, the Witchwood Way, but maybe a bit longer, maybe take it up. I want to start hitting the 100. I would like to get 100 under my belt this before the end of the year. Um, and, and, so. and just talk me through sort of injury because in the time that we've been running, which is what now, it's got to be a year or so. Yeah, 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 yeah it's over. Yeah, 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 either, yeah. Uh, touch word, I mean, I, I had a slight hamstring tweak a few weeks ago, but neither of us have picked up, and, and you do a lot more running than I do, neither of us have picked up a real injury, touch no. word. God, I mean, yeah. that, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. going to be the kiss, uh, kiss, uh, kiss of death, uh, isn't it? Uh. Uh, but... But, but I, know, I know in January when you first said you were going to run 10k a day, a number of people on social media said, "Oh no, you don't want to do that. You're going to mm. put too much strain on your body." Yeah, uh, that, those the keyboard warriors. Yeah, I so was. Ama- I remember. Yeah, we were talking about over coffee, weren't we? Because I, I was. I was actually really surprised. I thought it'd be like, "Oh, good luck. Yeah, great idea." But actually, I did get quite a bit. Not not trolling. That's a bit of a strong word. But it was a bit kind of like, "Oh." You should be doing yeah. that. You haven't been running long, and and I, and I I I get you've got you've got to be safe in anything you do. You've got to make sure you're not pushing hard. But you don't know until you've tried. Now I don't want to break myself, but mm. I knew actually if one of the days I wasn't feeling right, I'm like I'm not I'm not going to run. Mm. I'm just going to go. You know what? I've given it a go. I've done more than maybe what some people have, have said they would do by actually actioning it. So I'm never afraid to pull the plug and go. Now nah, I'm out. Bec- You've got to be able to make that call the right call. I'm sure you've, you know, no, no, for sure. some of your stuff. You, you know when you can push that bit more. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of people saying, yeah, you're going to, um, your knees, you're going to ruin your knees. Um, you're lucky you're on trail because it's not too, as impact as concrete, but you're still going to do damage. Um, I found the first week of that one, you could definitely feel it. But by the second and the third, kind of like what Sean said before, you know, you, when you're into the challenge, you yeah, actually start... Fit. You run yourself into it. Yeah, and, and, and there's muscles you start building strength up by the end, you know, because, yeah, there was no moment, again, touch wood, where I've had any... I love the way you just touch your head there, touch wood, and touch your head. We've got a wooden table here, and you decided to touch your head instead. Ah, you know, it's been through enough. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's just that, I think with injury, you've got to take it steady and, 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 and increase it gently and... It's very easy, I've noticed, when, when you get into running, to almost get a bit too excited and want to start, mm. you know, right, I'm just going to go out for, you know, say just, again, I go out for like a 2K, and you're feeling all right. Oh, actually, I'll do, I'll do four. You know, maybe starting off slow and, and gradually building into it has definitely been something I've learned, you mm. know, kind of. Um, and also, there's, there's elements when, you know, especially some of the longer distance stuff, you, you are walking. Yeah. Well, I think that's what a lot of people forget. Yeah, you know, yeah, on, totally. On and it's almost people don't like talking about it. Yeah, it's a bit it's... like, oh, you've exposed. So I've basically exposed the whole ultra scene now. Um, but not, you know, there's moments where you're walking, you're still moving forward. Oh. You're still moving. And you sometimes, you know, you're walking to take on some food. You know, not necessarily like, a, um, like an energy bar. It could be like a, bur- a burger, plant-based burger. Um, or it could be a hot... Uh, endurance food comes in many different forms. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we, but you're still moving. So We always read about the boys and girls in the States on, on the really big ones. It's, it's pizza. And, yeah, yeah, and, pizza. And, and, pizza. And, yeah, I, I, I've had pizza Chugging before. it down. Uh, my my favourite... Well, not favourite... Well, up there was when I had five Freddos. I made a... Five Freddos. Like five Freddos. I had a stack of five Freddos and took that down like a... In one go? Yeah. Did you like, get your mouth round it? Yeah. 
The, 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 the little chocolate froggy. Yeah, 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 the froggy, like, they piled them up. It was great. I had five Freddos. Yeah, so now we actually get to, to the main reason. It's nothing to do with, like, yeah. helping with your mental health <laughs> or anything like that. It's, it's the ability that you can eat five Freddos. Tell you what, the snack go. stops, uh, the aid stations... Yeah, some good ones on some of these events. But, um, but you have well, to... I have to get some notes off you. Because well, I've never done a run in it. But, well, it's not strictly true. I used to run uh, the Camel International Mountain Marathon before my accident, so years and years and years ago. But they didn't have any aid stations or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so it's worth getting into running just for the aid stations. Just for... Trying to just, yeah. Ultra running just for the snacks. Um, <laughs> just for the sausage rolls. Sausage rolls? Yeah, yeah. Brown foods. That's what I'm so Matt of running events who you mentioned. Like, he, I always remember when he said something about nutrition and like, you know, got to be everyone's got their own theory on nutrition, yeah, yeah, of which, is, which is great. And this is, and you know, whatever you, whatever you choose to. And there are areas where you need to feel properly. But on some of these longer events, you can't just have the sugary high energy. You want, you know, like the pizzas, sausage rolls, pork pies. So Matt was basically basically said it's any like kids think of kids party food no. <laughs> anything brown and that's always stuck with me so whenever I kind of see like sausage rolls at, at some of these stops they are uh, the longer I ones. mean you got me on the pork pie so so I I've, I've been plant based like totally yeah. now well since at least since lockdown you know the whole family's yeah, plant based yeah. and I know they're really bad but a pork pie I used to hun hanker yeah. after pork pies I used to love pork pies yeah that's you can get pork pies little little, 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 little mini ones yeah mini ones you put them in your pack. <sighs> God, but they, like, they, you, they, you they, want to be doing quite some, some distance, though. I don't think after the, you know, our... Our, our little 10K. The cone the the reverse finish with... Uh, that doesn't warrant a pork pie. Yeah, but it's those little vegan, wins, isn't it? I wonder if you can get vegan pork pies. 100%. You get vegan sausage rolls. I mean, 7 yeah. 8 in Fairford do an amazing yeah. vegan sausage yeah. roll. I've had some, yeah, when I've been at yours. Some of the, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Might, might have to, uh, look might, into that. Yeah, okay. Pop a note in the book on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's, if you're going to be doing it, you might as well try and make yourself as comfortable as possible as well, haven't you, really? So with your, with your food and foods you know, and you're lasting a long time, you know, it's only mm. 12 hours plus, some of the events, even, you know, longer. So I, I think it's, you know, try and make yourself, you know, comfortable, um, know what works for you, and um, and then it's just a case of just just doing it. You can always find. I can't remember where I was reading it. It was quite a while ago, and it was someone who they were coming, they were struggling on a race, and one of the guys was like, you know, rather than find reasons why you should. Oh, uh, it was. We um, oh, yeah. were talking about it the other day. It was the the female ultra runner from Australia. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was on Richard Roll. Yes. It. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so a while ago, but I re-listened to it because I re-listened to a lot of those, those ones. And, yeah, she was saying it's, um, yeah, like, almost find a reason. So, so, so yeah. you, she, she was running along and she would always say that instead of finding reasons why you should continue, she will find real reasons why she should stop. And unless That's she can it. find yeah. a reason to stop, she would just keep going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, incredible Amazing. one. I forget, forget what her name was. Yeah. Megan somebody. Uh, yeah. Because she, she did she, you know, she, some, some epic swim, then a 600-kilometre um, yeah, cycle it, ride, and then finish with bad water. Bad water, that's it. Yeah. yeah Maybe one of the toughest foot races in the world. Uh, yeah, quite... quite yeah. And, uh, but I, I picked that exactly the same thing out of that podcast. Yeah. It was, you just keep going until you find a legitimate reason that's it. not to keep going. Yeah. And that's actually, it's almost like a reverse psychology. Mm. Barely, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. what it is. It makes you think about it. And yeah, I, I think at the moment there's, there's so many good things you can pull from like the, um, you know, like those type of talks and, you know, like, like the guests you've had on. Like, honestly, it's, it's a, <laughs> I can't believe I'm on here, really. Um, well, I, at, I, I, I think at, the bigger question sure, is why didn't I get at, on the air? You know, like, and uh, look at uh, Tory Pendleton, you know, amazing, you know, I've de definitely taken bits from each one. And I think mm. that's what it is, is never be afraid to just, you don't have to like everything, but if you can just take one bit of information and keep that, that's what I've done. I've got a really varied, and I, I always like, forget where I've heard the information now because I'm almost kind of going, right, I want to be listening to this, this and this. So when, when you first said to me, you went, oh, you need to listen to Rich Roll, David Goggins. And then, you know, listen to Goggins and then, and then got his audio book and then, you know, took an element of Goggins. Couldn't go full Goggins to take an oh, element yeah, of I him. I think very few people I can. I think many can. Um, and then, you know, there, there's other people who, um, 
You know, like with Ross Edgy, with you know his amazing swim and uh, some of his, in the UK. you know, some of his view on things like stoic sports science and that type of element. Love that what he's doing. Um, you know, Pete Reed. Like, keep going back to Pete because like the stuff uh, he said he, was so resonating to me. You know, like the way he said it was things. Um, you know, when 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 Victoria Penland spoke about you know when you spent, guys spent time on you know on, on Everest and around you know, that element and. Yeah, it's, it's, it's taking those little bits of information and choosing what you want to do with them, I guess. And it's been it's, an open book. For, you know, yeah, to, yeah, to, to, I, to, I do. To, yeah, to, I feel like I've... accept that information yeah, in the first place. Yeah, and, and I do feel like it's, you know, with what's happened um, and happening, um, got to make the best of it. And, I, 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 and I've backed myself now. Like I said, it's not arrogance, it's not... Um, overconfidence oh I'm, I don't feel pain it's not that at all it's just that you know what I've been at that lowest I've been in that pain mm. I felt that pain I'm built I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna let a you know a run or anything tear me down type thing you know I might mechanically fail or I might go you know what actually I'm out but you know what I've attempted it I've given it a go Mm. You know, if I'm going to tell Jasper in life, you know, further on down and just give it a go, well, I've got to be able to practice what I preach, really. And I think that's what it is, is that accountability. It's that honesty. Going back to the honesty, it's that, like, if I'm saying it, I've got to be doing it. And I want to be better at it. I want to go further. With my, I am going to go further with my running. Right, I, I have no doubt that, that, that you are. And, you know, you, you're saying that you're backing yourself... And in the short space of time you've been running, you are picking up backers as well. I mean, you're an audience survey, get outside champion. Yeah. Uh, you now work uh, alongside Granger's. Yeah, um, Granger's you're, is you're, on. Um, uh, Valor, uh, you know, an amazing, you know, Welsh startup. Gemma with her uh, seven ingredients, uh, yeah, natural the, energy. The little gels, yeah. aren't they? The predominantly date. Yeah, date paste, um, date um, paste Welsh gels. sea salt and... Um, I always noticed that, 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 that she also makes some, some clothing as well. She makes some running clothing. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, running vests. Yeah, my, I've actually got one of their t-shirts, but it's in the washing basket. From oh, room. is it? Yeah, yeah. And then the guys at uh, Life Jacket, you know, who um, kind of saw through you, you know, you had some of their product and... Um, yeah, it's, it's all moisturiser something. Yeah, that type of thing. And, it, and it's, it, again, it's... But let's, let's be honest, with that forehead of yours, you do need... It to... is, a, I, you know, running these distance and these conditions, I've got to look after my forehead. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is a beacon. Yeah. You know, well, you, you do always run... <laughs> To your credit, you do always run in a cab. Yeah, I didn't want to wear a cap inside, brood. Uh, yeah, okay, thank so, you. Uh, yeah, well, I often wear a cap. Yeah, thank, yeah, thanks for that. So, uh, uh, but, 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 it, but it is beautiful but, uh, to see that you know, the brands are beginning to pick up what you're doing. And I want doing. to do stuff and, and with them. They, well, they are the also and backing And they, they back me. And, I've, and I kind of say, I'm pretty honest. Like, I'm not going for the fastest known time, the FKTs. Mm. I'm not going to be having a list of... Um, races where I'm going to I'm looking to become third or I'm looking to be top of my age category that's not me and if that's who they're after that that's cool like but it, for me I don't want it to overtake it's got to be natural and you know like like Jem like um you know um Billy and Jono uh Life Jacket we just got on really well it was just a conversation it was like I really liked what they were doing both brands you know both completely separate but loved the branding Loved the the message, and they were cool. And and I was quite honest. I said, look, I'm not I'm not your elite performer. I'm not your yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not your elite athlete. But I'm I'm honest. I'm I'm making headway with my running. Never did I think when I was at school would I would be into running or you know looking at some of the photos when I when I was in like when I got was in my you know, rugby kit. You know, kind of, never thought I'd be running as much now. But yeah, I'm. It, it, it's on. It's on. Watch your space, they say. <laughs> well, I, 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 can't, I can't really think of a better way of, of summing things up. I, I normally struggle to, to, uh, to land this thing, especially when you've got somebody such as you who... Uh, you're, you are so open about what you say. So I think the best thing that we can, that we can do to, to, to land this one is it's on. It's on. But I, I, yeah, it is on. Uh, I want to add one more thing though. It's like I want to say a massive thank you to you, you know, and Jazz and your amazing children for you know taking me under the wing. I do feel that. Like I feel you've, you, you gave me that 
almost like you took a punt, you took, you took a shot, you were like, you know, you identified, you could see that I was, you know, at that point at, at my lowest, but you, you gave me a chance, you were like, right, let's run together, you know, then you said, oh, well, let's have a coffee after, you know, you, you, you've given me so much more than, than just, just the running now. Like, you're very quick to say, oh, we run together. But for me and my family, you know, Kaylee and Jasper, like, the calls have been so supportive and, and, and amazing. So, well, that, that, you. That, that, that's a super nice thing to say. Um, but, uh, I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's easy to do when it's somebody, well, the whole team, uh, you know, you, Jasper, Kaylee, yeah. you, you're, you're, you're beautiful people. Uh, I think you're doing beautiful things. As I said right at the beginning, you're honest, you're generous to a fault, you would do anything for anyone. And, um, I, I, yeah, it speaks volumes. Okay. It really does. And that's, when I first asked you, you said, what, me on the show, that's exactly why I wanted you on. <laughs> I, you resonate with people, you connect people, you're a beautiful person. So thank you for your time this afternoon, uh, or this evening. See um, this evening. Um, I keep looking at your pink... Um, uh, audience of a uh, mug there, or watermelon. Your watermelon. Uh, but, but honestly, I sincerely mean yeah. it. Uh, it's it's been a total pleasure knowing you and running with you. So Thank you. thanks very much. It's on. It's on. So that was cool conversations. Uh, I couldn't have summed it up better myself uh, from Guy. I really hope that each and every one of you enjoyed that. Hit him up on social media. Um, hey, there's only one guy out there. You, you, you are just at... At uh, Guy Ilot, yeah. I-L-O-T-T. I-L-O-T-T. -T. I keep getting his name <laughs> um, wrong on the spelling on, and various graphics. But it's at Guy Ilot. Uh, it's predominantly Instagram. Yeah, yeah, Instagram. I'm, yeah, uh, that's it. Show him some love. Show him some support. And uh, he's really good at getting back to you as well. So there's lots of tips and insight into what makes him tick. Well, another episode comes to an end. I really do hope you are enjoying the conversations that we're having. But do hit us up. Let us know what is working for you. Let us know who you might want to see on the show. We intend to keep rolling it forward. We keep tweaking it. We keep trying new things. So... Let us know what you think, because unless you do let us know, we can't initiate change. So we will be back here in the Barn Theatre, same place, same time, next week. Thanks for being with us. Take care. <laughs>